So, someone posted a comment on the SFM version of Incopolis Plaza on the uh, workshop. And um, they basically asked me, um, well, like, they asked mainly John because John is the uploader of the add-on, but they basically asked, uh, can you add functionality to the Kitsune and the Tanuki in order to have the, um, their shirts be, um, to have the shirts have the colors that they have in the game? Um, originally I didn't do this because, um, I was mostly very lazy and I was also focusing on a ton of other things at the time, like trying to get the collision to work, trying to get the SFM version to work. Um... It's not an impossible fix. It can be added, but there are going to be some caveats um, and side effects of um, the uh, of such a fix. Okay, first I need to get the uh, elephant in the room out of the way. The material packs technically now are not necessary. I can um, fuse the texture packs with the add-ons. Uh, now that uh, the add-ons, the add-on system has been updated. The thing is, as we've all known, Gmod's update system is very notorious for not working, and um, therefore, like, I don't want to just get rid of the texture pack immediately because some people may not be aware of it on the day that it happens and then they'll probably end up with a very awkward surprise that the add-on will update and they don't need the texture pack anymore and then it'll be pretty awkward because then it might not work and then they'll complain like i'm missing like a hundred textures or something and there's te purple checkers everywhere um which won't be from because they won't have the new version of it um which which can be done because um, all you'd have to do is in this exact order, and I will mention it in the description. All you'd have to do is um, uninstall the add-on from the add-ons menu. Don't try deleting it manually because it's in a new location now. Um, it's like don't delete it manually. You'd have to uninstall it. Then you would have to quit the game. You would then have to resubscribe to the add-ons, and then then you would have to um, start the game again. And then, hopefully, that would be when uh, the add-on would be fixed. Um, but, okay, people probably won't follow those steps in that order because they probably think I'm not uh, making any sense, but uh, that's how I've done it. I've troubleshooted it myself when an add-on wasn't working. Uh, I tried most of the steps, and then the one step that got it to work was that set of steps right there, which I will write down. I'm not going to just leave it as a video thing. <clears throat> but in order to apply um, the fix that is mentioned, it would require a bit more work. Um, fusing the texture packs wouldn't destroy the current... I don't know how many there are. I have not been keeping track. I do not keep track. That's not my job. The however many saves, and especially, especially, it's not even just the ones that are uploaded. Some people don't upload saves. I have a ton of saves that I haven't uploaded, and there are probably others who do uh, similar. So there are probably more saves of it that I am unaware of, because that's just something that some people with uh, some tact don't do. So I'm not saying that people who just upload saves are not being tactful in any way, but like, some people don't want to just show their whole session to the whole world. Especially since some could require add-ons and textures and all that stuff. So, um, in order to apply, like, merging the material packs will not do that. It will not destroy saves. And in the case of Octo Valley and the shooting range, it won't do that because I won't need to make any drastic changes. What those add-ons are, are simply just a couple of the materials taken out of uh, the other add-on, but they're in the same place. So, like, the same, they, both add-ons have the same set of folders, both add-ons have the same set of, uh, um, 
like all of the models point to the materials in those folders. In fact, um, my, myself personally, uh, for the Gmod end anyway, um, I have all of that stuff merged. So merging the add-on would simply just allow you to use it in the way I've been using the map for the time that I have had since I've made it. So in that case, it won't destroy your saves because you're simply just using it the same way you have before. It's just that you don't need to um, subscribe to another add-on in order to have access to those ones. Um, which I will do very shortly. There's something that I really want to um, put public, which I will put public on my Twitter and probably on Steam somewhere um, because there are uh, there is a lot of context related to uh, very recent circumstances that I can't really reveal uh, exactly why. So in the case of just merging the add-ons, that would be fine. However, um, someone asked, can you... Uh, okay, there's two things I really want to address in this particular video. The two latest comments on the SFM add-on. Um, one of which is almost a year old. Um, the, f the first one, someone was asking me, can you make the Kitsune and the uh, Tanuki have their proper uh, shirts? Um, in order to do so, you would have to add paintable functionality to them in order for that to be done because they have colorable textures inside the game that... Um, allow them to be any color. I believe during Splatfests is when they change color to match uh, the team that they're on, Team A or Team B. Um, so that's probably why they're coal textures instead of um, just being baked into the texture as it is. And because of that, I hadn't um, really touched on that a whole lot because um, I think Callie and Marie's chairs also have a uh, coal functionality where uh, depending on what team you're on the uh, color on the arrows and behind the arrows is different um, so like one has more prominence of uh, a particular team over the other and it's reversed on the other uh, sister's chair which would be impossible to do. I don't know how that could possibly be done because um, it's one texture um, and I don't think you can color in that manner in source. Um, so because I couldn't color the chairs, I figured uh, the Tanuki and the Kitsune probably won't need that attention either. So, and even if I were to add the, this to the Kitsune and the Tanuki, it wouldn't, um, I wouldn't do the chairs anyway because it's just completely impossible uh, from my point of view to add that fix. Now there's two ways I can employ this fix because I know there are how many saves, I don't, there are probably hundreds of saves because the add-on has been out for a year and um, people are probably just settled in and have made their things and I really don't want to end up surprising somebody being all like, hey, I added this fix to the plaza but um, your save file is kind of not going to work anymore and you're kind of going to need to rebuild everything again. So this is why I'm putting this out now because there are two methods, one of which will destroy your save, the other of which doesn't but is way more complicated. So I'm just sort of gauging on YouTube if it's good to uh, employ the fix because um, I just want to, I just don't, I really don't want to end up surprising people with such a minor uh, functional addition. Not that I don't want to add it, just that um, it's very complicated and would have a bunch of feats to it. The first method, which would destroy your saves, um, but would end up being more accessible in the end, is giving it functionality with the TF2 paint tool, which would require me to... I would need to... Rec I'm just going to tell you how this is done so then you have an absolute idea of the kind of drastic change that it would require. It's not much. It's not too complicated. It's just that this would mean, this would uh, carry over into why uh, it would destroy uh, 
all the existing save files out there of the plaza as it is. So, um, I would need to recompile the models in order to give them collision. The TF2 paint tool can't paint something that isn't there. Uh, so they would need collision, which wouldn't be hard. They would probably just get, they would probably just get collision on their bodies. I wouldn't give them too much crazy collision anywhere else. I would just need to give them collision on their bodies in order for this to occur. So then they would get collision. Uh, currently, the way I've uh, made the map, every single entity that isn't collision is a dynamic prop because uh, there's a bug with static props that I am not going to try and attempt to fix because I have attempted to fix it in the past and that's why I have 20 minutes of playtime on Team Fortress 2 because that was me frozen on the title screen. Uh, so while I was attempting a fix for one of these maps with the prop static problem. Uh, based on something someone said on the internet that didn't work. So I don't honestly know how that can be done. So for the time being, most props are prop dynamic because it just works better that way. And I was told that way and that was how uh, the map works. So they are currently prop dynamics. So technically half of the work has already been done. They would then need a key in their models to tell them to not be affected by the fizz gun because the moment they get collision, okay, the moment they get collision, they are going, because they are a dynamic prop, they are going to be able to be uh, affected by it. And therefore they would need a key in the model itself, in the map, to tell it to not be affected by the fizz gun so then they don't so then they can't be dragged off of it. Technically, I could do this for the tool gun, but the TF2 paint tool is using the tool gun, so I can't really do that. And then as a side effect of that, they would also be able to be removable, which I don't think would mainly be the problem of that, but just letting you know that would end up, because that's what prop dynamics do. They can be altered while the map is running. It is a dynamic prop. Um, so then after that is done, the map would need to be recompiled because it would need to understand that that is a new property to give to those models in the map as it stands. And then I would need to recompile cube maps, which you know takes a long time. Um, and because the map would then need to be recompiled, that, along with the, because, you know, the cube maps would then need to be recompiled because that's done in the game. That would probably be what would uh, destroy your saves, is the need to redo the map. It's not just doing the prop by itself, because the map needs to know that those props have changed. Because otherwise you're going to be able to toss the Kitsune and the Tanuki wherever you want. And I don't really think that's appropriate. Especially since, like, I don't think they're fully rendered. Like, I think if you look... This is going to this is gonna go into awkward territory because I know, like, partially, like, the lore of the things is a bit... Not very friendly uh, to uh, talk about. Um... But if you were to look underneath the Tanuki model, please, can we get our minds out of the gutter? If you were to look under the Tanuki model, I don't think, like, under there would be rendered. So, uh, if you were to toss it, it wouldn't, uh, really be designed to do that. I mean, it's like, if, if the models were fully rendered, it's like, I don't really think I'd have a problem with people tossing them all over the place, but then, like, people would toss them and then you would be able to see that half of it isn't rendered because that's a game trick. That's what they do to save on memory. And, uh... That they're technically not really supposed to move. You could remove them if you wanted to make a whole... Where did the Tanuki and the uh, Kitsune go? Or, like, something like... <laughs> they never existed. They were just, uh, 
illusions of a pretense of an of uh, the bunny world beforehand or whatever. L look, I'm making up in instances on the spot to justify why it might be uh, appropriate to uh, give them that. But in order to do that, the map would need to be recompiled and that would destroy your saves. If that is okay, I will do that with the material merge. There is a soft method that won't destroy your saves, even if I were to merge the material pack. That wouldn't uh, destroy your saves, but it would be more complicated in order to perform edits to the color if you wanted to do so. The material, since they are um, prop dynamic already, um, I don't think um, much would need to be uh, done in the way of um, the material itself. Like, the material is the easiest bit. This would be done in either circumstance, but you could cut out all of the recompile in the prop, the recompile in the map, but you could just edit the material. However, this would mean that you wouldn't be able to use the TF2 paint tool to change it because they don't have collision and therefore it won't be able to hit what isn't there. So in order to change the color, if I were to apply the material fix, you would need to go in and find the VMT that uh, the material is looking for and you would need to change the color, the RGB value in that in order to change uh, the color of the bib or the shirt in question to whatever it is you wanted it to be. I'm not saying like it's impossible, it would just be very complicated for most people because you would have to extract the GMA and then you would have to toss it into your add-ons. Then you would have to go into the materials directory in that uh, add-ons bit and then you would need to find the material I think it's like Kitsune, bod Kitsune body and I don't know what the Tanuki's one is yet but I can easily uh, find that the Kitsune body and whatever the Tanuki's is and then you could change the um, RGB values to be whatever you want and then in that case none of anyone's saves would really be touched because editing the material I don't think uh, is that drastic of a change. It's mainly if you make changes to the models and the map itself is where things start to uh, get uh, muddy. So I give you the option between the hard version, which is the recompiling of the map, the recompiling of the models, giving them collision, giving them the key, um, changing the materials, merging the materials, and then uh, you could then use the TF2 paint tool to color it whatever you wanted, and uh, they could also have the color in uh, question. Or you could take the soft method, which um, is basically all of the material stuff without touching any of the models or the maps, but that would mean you can't use the TF2 paint tool. Um, you would have to go in and edit the material yourself if you wanted to perform any changes. For the SFM end, like this, all of this is for Gmod. For the SFM end, I have no idea because I don't have contact with John anymore. Uh, it's also why I can't respond directly on those add-ons and I had to make a whole bunch of comments on my Gmod add-on because I legitimately can't comment there. If I could comment, I would. I can't. I literally can't. I've been blocked. So, I'm going to have to look into that because um, of the next thing I want to talk about, um, which I have been looking into because a bunch of people have uh, talked to me about it and uh, I have looked into it. Uh, the second comment, which was about a year old, is someone basically asking, why are there no collisions in the map? I want to be able to snap uh, uh, collisions in um, SFM. Why do you not have any? And uh, this, this partially falls into why I'm not really uh, into territory I'm not really willing to talk about, but um, 
try and explain as best as I can. The way I make collision is by making a model in Blender and then attaching it to one of the props in the actual stage, since there's like hundreds. Um, those props become static props, and then you can then walk on them. In Gmod, this is absolutely not, nothing of a problem. You can barely even tell the difference. Uh, the only difference that can be told is um, when you use the vcolide command that I specified in the previous video, uh, you don't just see your ragdolls. You also see the map because the map is made out of the way you would make a collision model for a prop or a ragdoll. Or a ragdoll without the constraints in the case of a map. You wouldn't have constraints for a map because you wouldn't need to. Um, but uh, that's pretty much the only thing. So basically whenever you type in vCollide on any of my maps, you can see uh, all of the work that I had to do in order to ensure that you can actually walk on the ground appropriately. Um, but enough of that. Um, because I make collision in this manner, I don't actually use hammers method, which is drawing brushes over the surface, which is mostly just cubes. And cubes are not very uh, precise in all circumstances. Sometimes you might need a cylinder. And... That's why I use Blender to collision, because I can be more precise with the models in question. So then you can have a more accurate collision versus, versus you know, ha having tons and tons and tons of cubes everywhere. Um, because of this, this isn't the method that a whole lot of the others use. And, um, therefore there was a bit of, um, conflict. I don't want to say we fought over whose collision is better, um, because that's not true. Um, just in the way we did things, we did things very differently from one another. And, uh, also because I don't have a whole lot of knowledge of SFM, which I will go into, into more detail very shortly in, uh, the coming days, uh, uh, this is why um, making SFM things has been very difficult, because I will go into more detail on that soon. But when I was alerted to what was going on with SFM first, John and all the others basically told me that uh, conve the um, collision, making collision for SFM was basically a convenience and not a necessity, so I never pursued it until a bunch of people nagged me to do so. And I found out uh, a couple of things. Um, it is possible to add my collision as it stands to the current models in the SFM versions. Um, but when you compile a model with collision, you end up with a file with a .phy extension, and that is the collision model. In Gmod, this is your collision. It, it doesn't matter if it's a ragdoll or if it's a prop. If it's a if it has a .phy, it has collision. So, in the SFM workshop, for some reason, these just don't upload. <laughs> it just gets rid of them when you upload models with them for some reason. Because I guess it's just not needed. So, you would need a separate download in order to do so. <laughs> um, basically. Up to this point, I had not been made aware of this because, again, I had no incentive to look into it before. But, okay, I have tested a couple of things with it lately. And PH-wise, at least on the map end, do work in SFM. They can work. You just need to have a separate download in order to link to models with PHYs, and then you can then snap them to the map and do that uh, command that is uh, very convenient. Um, 
But I do not have contact with John anymore for reasons I will mention in the following days on Twitter and uh, Steam. I'm not going to give you a specific date because that's going to be too stressful, but please be on the lookout for it. Um, I will mention, like, more things about why I've been so quiet, uh, my problems with the SFM end, and uh, a couple of other things. Um... So, because of that, um, if I were to apply patches to the Gmod end to do that, I can very easily do that because I have access to the Gmod things. I can test them and then I can easily put them up and do that. I don't have that for the SFM stuff because I can't really use the program all that well and I will go into more detail. Again, about that stuff, I really don't want to mention it now when uh, things are um, a bit awkward to uh, tiptoe around at the moment. But um, I'm not stopping making maps. It's not going to end up into that conclusion. It's just going to slow things down a whole lot and um, it will make things very uh, confusing. But, mainly because I don't have contact with John anymore and he's the one who uploaded all of the SFM add-ons, if I were to, um, if I were to add my fixes, I don't know if he'd add his fixes, he doesn't appear to respond to a whole lot of people a whole lot, this falls into those other points of reasons. And because of that, like, I don't know what he specifically did to those maps. He did something, something along the lines of uh, editing it. I don't specifically know what, but like, you know, I don't know. I couldn't even, I don't even know how, if I could really look into it because I don't have SFM and uh, I don't have a whole lot of tools to look at it without things getting, again, confusing. Two versions of add-ons would be, uh, a bit confusing. I don't know what he did to the models, I don't know what he did to the map, so I don't know if you could compile um, directly from his map, my collision, onto it. Um, I do have the Gmod assets if anyone wanted to reconvert, which I'm thinking may need to happen, but again I will specify more in the coming days because SFM is going to be very 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 difficult. Especially since I can't use it all that well, and I was using a tutorial when I was attempting to use it that one time, so... Since I can't use it like a regular user could, it's, um, gonna be a bit, uh, slow. So... Just a small update, we'll put a straw poll and the troubleshooting of how you fix a, uh, Gmod add-on for the plaza fix for specifically gmod because i have access to only that one if uh it depends on what fix you want and uh whichever one basically uh goes further i will uh go forward with uh that one no matter which version of the fix that i will um provide for the Kitsune and the Tanuki. Um, I will leave the texture packs up for a few days after I uh, provide the fix, but they will not be permanent. They will be privated. I don't like deleting things. They will be privated after some time because I will then uh, basically you know, I don't need those add-ons on my list, basically. So, they don't need to have the attention anymore. And therefore, um, they don't need to be able to be resubscribed to. Um, I am aware that people will likely, probably, if they have to do that, will probably just grab the GMA and then re-extract the uh, materials into your folders and if you do that i don't have a problem with it you're basically just doing the same thing as um 
subscribing to the add-on will do anyway. It's just that um, you're just wasting a little bit more space. so Because they will be duplicates. So that's why I will uh, private it after a few days. Because if you were to subscribe to both, if you were a new subscriber, it would waste space. And the last thing we kind of want to do with an add-on that has uh, so much in it is to waste space. So, I mean, I, I, I kind of sound like a bit of a hypocrite to myself because I have so much in my computer in order for this to work, but just on the, just on the end of working with all of this, it's better if you're not um, clogging it. So, just see which method you want. Um, I'm pretty sure most people will probably be on... I'm just going to take a guess here that most people will probably want the TF2 paint fix because then it just adds more functionality and it's more easy, accessible functionality. But again, I am keeping people in mind who have already created save files and I don't necessarily want to be like, you have a time limit to use them and all that. I really... I don't want to be that person if a majority of people... Uh, are really attached to those things and like can't or don't want to rebuild them so and like again as to the question of leaving both up forever again it would just waste space uh and uh like eventually you would probably update and therefore you would waste space and you would then still uh have your save probably removed anyway like gmod's update system is pretty incompetent for a little bit but not like forever i've noticed so that's kind of it there will be uh something coming in the next few days i'm not going to specify exactly what that is it's going to be something related to the project i hope you all like it um yeah See you all, I guess.